GTA 4 is a game completely overshadowed by the behemoth that is Grand Theft Auto 5, though there's always been a community loyal to the game. Naturally, as time goes on, the ever-evolving community shrinks, and by now in 2020, it's pretty small. That's why I was so surprised when this happened. For some weeks, there have been a new challenge to GTA 4, the Ivy Flowerpot Challenge. Hello, I want to take the plant. Thank you very much. Now remember, we gotta get all the way to that Abana Casino. Which, this can sound really easy on the surface, but- This is harder than it looks, man. Sheesh. What you're seeing is the hashtag Ivy Flowerpot Challenge, where players have the task of taking a flowerpot from one side of Liberty City to the other, as fast as possible and with six stars. There's a link to the original video in the description. I released this back in October, two months ago, and I promise you I had no idea it would take off like it did. I was even saying this in DMs. Well, we go over 30 videos in response, including attempts by Wherever57010, BLG, and Nikitos. This meant the challenge was being seen by thousands, including the man himself, the very person that inspired it, Sonny Evans. Oh, and Zach Hawks watched it too, which is pretty cool. As you all know, I have tried and I have failed at the Flowerpot Challenge, but today I have a chance to learn from all of you, and in part 3 I will give it one last shot. Right here in this playlist is every single video uploaded in response to the challenge, which you can find a link to in the description. Some people failed, some people succeeded, and others just created really entertaining videos. Let's give them all a watch. If you don't know what the flower pot challenge is, then in short, what you do is take this flower pot in the broker hospital and bring it all the way to the Alderney abandoned casino. This first video is full of some useful ass information, all of which to help you beat the flower pot challenge. And then give yourself like three or less stars in the way back of the hospital so that the SWAT vans don't spawn and then the cop will inevitably go to the back of the hospital. Go ahead and run for the plant. And then when you get the plant, run to in front of the doors, give yourself the rest of the six stars. That first tip has already taught me how I can manipulate cop spawns and I saw Mortis use the same method too, but we'll look at his run more closely later. After that, go up the bridge and cross it. On the right side, there's a baseball bat spawn if you want to use that, which you can use it to, I guess, disarm people if you really want to do that for some reason. You know, maybe I do want to disarm people for some reason. Thank you. If you didn't know already, it is possible to transport the plant from a vehicle. Bioshock lists off which ones you can use. The vehicles I can think of are the Cavalcade FXT, the Contender, Bobcat, and the Rancher. He also explains a pretty serious issue with the Rancher. The Rancher has a collision fuck up on the front, so make sure you anger your vehicle a lot more to the side when you're going up the staircase. As soon as I heard this, I thought about the thumbnail of a video uploaded by someone called Dio. Some voodoo shit is going down here, and I thought maybe it was caused by the same collision bug. Not exactly the case, however. It starts off a bit weird as Dio gets into the back and drops the flower. Suddenly the vehicle begins bouncing. You tell me Rockstar didn't anticipate us doing this? I mean, who would have guessed? Who would have guessed that? Dio skids onto the main road and God or someone, maybe Leslie Benzies, tries yunking him into the sky. Weasel news! Breaking news! The LCPD has dispatched delight news teams throughout all areas as Liberty City is gripped by the biggest crime of history. An unidentified European male has stolen a flower pot out of Broker's Hospital. The LCPD are now doing their best to catch the criminal, and a police manhunt has been made underway. Maurice went above and beyond of the video he created for the challenge. I don't want to show too much as I would prefer you go and watch it yourself. Visit the description for all the videos that I particularly recommend. One thing though, he did attempt to throw the flower pot into a boat, like where I was trying in part 1, and if you could pull this off, you should be able to avoid a lot of risk that players in the sea have to deal with, but of course it doesn't go to plan. I could already smell victory! However later, he does prove that it is in fact possible, and I'm considering trying it for myself. I jumped on the boat, Drop the flower pot, kick that bitch out of there, and when I backed up, I got killed. I've been a viewer of Wherever for many years now, so it's really, really cool to see him try my challenge. And in the video, he actually came super close to making world record. It started off with a lucky bobcat spawn. He drove up Algonquin Bridge and then down the other side. Braxtonly launched the pot out too. Retrieving the flower cost him about 40 seconds. But back at it, a minute later he was on Hickey Bridge, where he rammed through the roadblock safely. It was looking really promising for him until he made one bad decision. Left or right? He chose left, then chaos ensued.
BLG came in with an attempt on the Xbox 360. He decided to take Algonquin Bridge on foot and spent a solid couple minutes running across it. Taking the first right, he makes his way north, soon coming through Middle Park. The new squad blocking access to Alderney had been finessed, so BLG made his way across no problem. But the helicopters, on the other hand, definitely were a problem, and he barged into a newsstand for cover. The shopkeeper didn't appreciate it very much. Despite the dangers of an on foot run, he'd completed the objective in one piece. And Nico was ecstatic. Hooray! John Anthony HD. If you know this guy, then you know he's like the running man of Liberty City, I guess you could say. Okay, so I'm gonna map out my little strategy. I'm gonna come out here, I'm gonna go down the street, and I'm gonna try to make my way up to this bridge, right? We've not actually seen this bridge used yet, so let's see how it is. I've not been shot yet, so it's actually, we're doing really good. Oh shit, that civilian just got shot! He just shot that guy! He can't run? I literally stopped for 10 sec- Oh, Playboy, why are you jumping like that? Why are you jumping like that, bro? The jump glitch you just saw, by the way, is extremely common when holding an object. In fact, John wasn't the only one to notice it. Um... Uh, okay. Alright, so we can't jump with the plant. That's something we just learned. No, 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 no. Run, 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 run. Just... One major annoyance in the challenge is that, for some reason, 90% of the time when you jump with the pot being held, it makes you do this useless animation which stops you dead in your tracks. Right here, I got it three times in a row. Oh shit! Oh my god, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Run, 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 run! Oh, I'm so dead, I'm so dead, I'm so dead, I'm so dead. Ugh. But anyways, he got on with his second attempt and tried Algonquin Bridge, which we know is much safer. I think there is a train tr Oh, we gotta take that route! The bottom- oh, there's- oh, we can get on- oh, fuck. Can I jump? Can I jump? Can I jump? I could jump! I could jump! Jump, Nico! Oh my god! Oh, go, go, get up, get, get up, motherfucker. Oh shit, they came down here! What is that shit? Cops are coming down here? Run, Nico. Ni oh, Nico just cursed them out in some kind of language. John traveled through the subway tunnels and eventually made his exit, only to be ambushed by Paul Blart himself. Alright, we're gonna go- Oh shit, oh shit, that scared the shit out of me! Fuck you, cop. Fuck you, cop. Get out of my way. Get out of my way, asshole. Through Middle Park and then north in Algonquin, the bridge to Alderney was right there. But he took a minute to catch his breath. We could go in a burger shot and hold it down for a second. We gotta hold it down for a little bit. Fuck. Holding it down for a second. They're gonna surround me soon. Oh, fuck. I'm getting shot. This is not a... And then his game crashed. There's also a part two, which I have linked below. It's funny as fuck. Oh, and hey, if you were to try this challenge, I should let you know that it's not against the rules to pick up health, armor, weapons, whatever, along the way, after the challenge has begun. <sighs> so you lied to me, Rob. Rob lied to me. I was happy to see Nikitos give the challenge a shot, and he aced it on foot. Of course, so Gonquin Bridge, then he moved up north past the church. He took on the Alderney roadblock no problem, and made it to the abandoned casino before the textures could even load in. My god, this bridge is popular. Joshua took the first right upon arrival and was quickly getting surrounded by police. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. There's a fat cop right there in front of me. He should be okay though. Nope, he's got a pistol. Oh, this is gonna fuck me. I'm gonna get fucked. I'm gonna get fucked. I'm gonna fuck. Oh, fuck. If I actually make it through this, I would be impressed. Oh, no! No, I tried to jump! <laughs> no. So yeah, Nico's face says it all. We saw some innovation on run two when he decided to take an underground route to head northwards. Actually, this might give us somewhat of an advantage because now the helicopter can't see us. Maybe I'm, I'm really reevaluating the whole idea of having the ragdoll shit when I get shot. Although, oh, okay, yep, there we went. Fantastic. But the new path wasn't met with overwhelmingly positive reviews. In fact, Joshua was clearly having a rough time, even after trying this challenge for over an hour. Yep, there we go. You get here and then you're just dead. Dead. Jump, 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 don't get hit. No! We made it so far. Because I'm already at like, yep, there we go. Okay, alright, well, we've lost this one. Yep, I'm dead. 100%. So, this is going to be the final run, regardless of how far we get, regardless of, you know, if we make it or not. But, let's go. I won't spoil the last run for you. Again, it's another entertaining video, which I have linked below, so why not give it a watch? Doggy Doo comes out of nowhere with a badass cinematic. His channel is full of stuff like this too. 
Similar to John Anthony, he jumps onto the tracks from the highway. He takes the tunnels all the way to North Holland, right into the line of sight of some FIB agents. This is probably the hardest part of the challenge, so he grabs some body armor and then takes on the bridge. Past the police station and he's ambushed once again. He slips away from the cops, beating the challenge. Not just for Nico, but Chop too. Brings a tear to my eye. The story of It's Clonk Andre is a beautiful one. It starts with blissful ignorance in video one. I mean, how could he not know this is by far the worst criminal offence one can commit in Liberty C. The six star wanted level surprises him and eventually the pressure destroys him. In video two has some big dick energy. Andre makes his way back for another attempt and you just know his confidence is sky high. He holds up the entire hospital and yoinks the flower pot. Though it ends in failure once again. So by video number three, Ando tried something much different. The mainframe has officially been hacked. What you're seeing here is an actual mod for the flower pot challenge that he created. In this video he demonstrates how it should be used for my challenge, however users of this mod can create their own version with a new object, starting point and ending point. Now as he takes the flower pot, the police are automatically on him like vultures. He takes the right side of Algonquin Bridge and then soon the subway. After a lot of careful waiting in the projects, he rushes Hickey Bridge where he's shot to the ground, almost killed. Andre wraps around and makes a second attempt while a loose team are searching for him below. He's pretty banged up but he's not far from the finish line. In the end, not even the helicopters could stop him. This was a well deserved win. Thank you for creating a mod for the challenge, if anyone would like to use it I have it linked in the description. I think a lot of people already know this, but there is a video called Can you take a flower pot across the map in GT4? I tried it out, thought it's gonna be a little bit, you know, easy. On paper, it does seem like a very straightforward challenge, but clearly it surprised some people, not just King the Sun either. My first try was basically to get a pickup ready to put the pot of plant in the back, so I could easily just drive to the place. Fuck, 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 fuck. Is this, is this a bobcat? Yes, it's a bobcat. Okay, throw the pot of plant in the back. No, Nico, Nico, put it in the back. As a clarification, I did forgot that you can actually press E to drop the pot of plant and I decided to try for a little bit longer to throw it into the back of the truck, which then led into this. Oh, Jesus Christus, I see so many people. Run, Nico, just fucking run. Fuck it, fuck the bobcat, fuck the bobcat, Nico. Though despite the difficulties of this challenge, he'd soon be inches away from victory. But one small mistake killed his run right at the end. Oh, Jesus! Where's the fucking entrance? Nein! The sad realization was when the entrance was in front of, well, the bridge. It was not behind the bridge or on the sides, this was the only entrance to the house. And of course, after a couple of deaths extra, I finally managed to do it. Here is my run from taking the potted plant from one side of Liberty City to the other side. This is yet another amazing video I'm gonna particularly recommend you all watch. Thank you for taking part and I'm glad you eventually found that entrance. So if you'd like to see his run, go to the description and find his link. I love this run from Danio. Danio? As it ends in perhaps the most desperate and tragic gunfight ever. So it begins with blatant racism as a flower pot is launched or a Jamaican's head. He takes Algonquin Bridge, but also grabs the cheeky assault rifle at the end, then shortly after a grenade too, the same one that killed Andre. Next he lobs the flower pot at an old white busker playing the saxophone. So I guess I take back my previous comment about the racism. He continues further down the station when a cop tries to stop him, so Danio turns around with the M4 and drops his ass. Out the tunnels and into North Holland, the big shoot always upon us. You know shit's about to go down when he drops the flower like that. His loyalties are still with the challenge, Danio grabs the pot. 
Around the corner is a massive noose team, the infamous squad you find guarding the bridge to Alderney. His ammo runs dry before he can even kill one of them, so he reaches for his grenades. To be honest, the gameplay you're about to see is by someone living on another plane of existence. He picks up, get this, he picks up the M4 dropped by the noose squad. He goes out a hero. Also wears pretty nice shoes too. Well, I wasn't expecting Johnny to give it a shot, but here we are. And in a taxi too? Times is changing, Johnny is getting way too old for his bike. Neobium takes the weirdest route across the Algonquin Bridge I've seen so far. Makes his way down the stairs and cuts left. And then he gets himself a bobcat. Across Hickey Bridge and all the way to the casino, a completely clean run. Well, you know what, maybe not. Right in the last minute, the flower pot falls onto the beach and the pursuing police catch up. He gets lit up but the man drags himself to the finish mark. Also, thank you for spreading the word and creating the Flowerpot Challenge mega thread on GTA forums. There's a link to it in the description. Louise too? Joshua does music, takes the plant on foot the highway, but the hell you just won't give him a break, so he jumps off the bridge. It's kinda all gone wrong straight away, soon after the police catch him on top of a bus. He finds a rancher, charges the roadblock, but it disappears. So he just kinda gives up. Attempt number three, the same plan. The planet is tightly secured in the back as he prepares to run the roadblock and yeah, it disappears again. These might have been the funniest attempts that I watched. Joshua just ends up air breaking to the casino. You did it Luis, you know, kinda. I think we're all getting the point now. Let's quickly cover the last runs and then we'll move on to the world records. There's Sun Io, Danko, Lucas, Mortis, Arian, and SE Gamers. You know how it goes, Sun takes Algonquin Bridge, same as Danko and Lucas. Mortis grabs a strap first and does the same. Arian was so bored of this damn challenge, they called it quits early and jumped off. It's almost. But SE Gamers tried something different, jumping onto the tracks instead and running. Nope, never mind. SE takes the stairs too. Sun cuts through Middle Park, then Lucas does too. Danko runs a straight line northwards and picks up some armor. Meanwhile, Mortis is at the bridge enjoying his time there. He uses the pistol he grabbed earlier to shoot a cop in pursuit so he can grab the M4. And Arian's taking shortcuts through Bergeshot and Star Junction, eventually running through Middle Park West. Essie decided to take the subway tunnels and is just now getting out. Sun's looking to use a car and checks the parking lot near Hickey Bridge, luckily finding a bobcat to storm the bridge. Danko splits open North Holland's running at lightning speeds and also makes it over the bridge to Alderney with no issues. Lucas treks through the back alleys incognito until he makes the big rush across the bridge where he takes more than a couple of shots. Similarly, Mortis does the exact same, though he doesn't have to take the risk of running past the police. He whips out the rifle he grabbed and the entire new squad hit the floor instantly. All the while, Arian's enjoying a motherfucking hot dog. Arian baits the whole roadblock team and slips into Alderney. SE Gamers, however, is in a bad situation. There's some armor on the coast you can grab, but Noose took this gamer out. For everyone else though, their run is coming to a successful close. Sun drives off a cliff to reach the finish line and the pot flies out, which might actually be a more efficient way to grab it. The FIB want Nico so bad though and shoot him up, he just barely makes it with his life. Danko on foot grabs some armor, runs down a cliff, and survives the final sprint to the finish line. Lucas breaks his everything jumping off the bridge. He worms his way over a wall alongside the coast and eventually to victory. Meanwhile, Mortis out here grabbing more snacks. But soon he rolls off the cliff and down to the casino. And finally, Arian makes it home too, inches away from death with a sliver of health remaining. Massive thanks to all six of you for taking part and to everyone else so far. The final three runs all held the world record at one point in time for beating the challenge exceptionally fast. Let's see how they did it exactly. First Bioshock. He was, I think, the first person to complete the flower pot challenge in under 10 minutes. It all begins with his back of the hospital technique. It's the first of several things to go wrong during his run. Of course there's a fucking cop outside. 
Oh my god, no way! Holy shit, this spawn is epic. Oh, and it's got no boxes and shit in the back too, that's even better. He's lucky enough to get a rancher spawn, and so he drives it immediately to a Gonkum bridge. Okay, this is actually really good, I think I can get it. Despite this being one of the fastest attempts to date, he had time to replenish his health. This just shows you how much time you could save if you avoid getting shot at the beginning. You could continue all the way to Alderney. Speaking of which, Bioshock perfectly breaches the roadblock and makes it onto the third island in under four minutes. Okay, we're fine. We got it then. Oh shit. There's way too many cops right there. I think during this section the cop spawn spooked him so he felt the need to take it off road. Oh my god, I went the wrong way. I was fucking watching the map for some reason. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I fucked this up so much. Although that's true, Bioshock still gets a time of 5 minutes and 53 seconds. In second place is Cute Skylar. She starts to run with similar look to Bioshock but alternatively finds a bobcat. Over Algonquin Bridge and she pulls up wherever and launches the pot. This proves once more that there is still so much potential for you, the viewer watching right now, to achieve a much better time, if you're able to avoid these mistakes. This is when Skylar did something amazing. She took the tunnels, the one and only competitor to upload a tunnel run. One advantage to this is that the roadblock is significantly easier to pass through. She's in Alderney in less than three and a half minutes, but now she has to drive way further north to reach the casino. So close to an under five minute run, there's just one last blunder. A rock sends the bobcat sliding into the shallow water, making the plant fall out. She of course grabs it ASAP, but the police are really giving it their all, crushing her almost. Waiting on the other side of the bridge is a noose ambush. The one with the shotgun came so close to killing the run, but she does it by the skin of her teeth. With a time of 5 minutes and 13 seconds, compared to Bioshock's 5 minutes and 53 seconds. D-Dash is the current world record holder for the Flowerpot Challenge. Let's watch his run to see how he did it. He has an unusual start. He jumps onto the road and follows it around to the back of the hospital where there happens to be a bobcat. It's innovative ideas like this which get you world records. However, as a consequence, all the on-foot police open fire and shoot the shit out of his car. Over Algonquin Bridge, not without a little police ambush that causes him to crash. Into the city, then directly west. I noticed that D-Dash is probably favouring completely straight roads to build as much speed as possible. Soon he's ramming through Hickey Bridge, making it into Alderney around the same time as Skylar, though much closer to the finish point. This all came at the cost of a tyre though. Then he takes a pause break. I mean, what a chad, he doesn't give a fuck. We stay on road and safely descend down the hill, all the way to the casino. He tries to grab the pub, but Nico just kind of stares off into the distance, until he doesn't, and then finally our man makes it home, achieving an outstanding time of 4 minutes and 37 seconds, compared to Skylar's 5 minutes and 13 seconds. So there you have it, can you beat D-Dash's current world record run? I'll be looking out for videos, and in my next video, I'll be giving it a go myself. I hope you all enjoyed, thank you for supporting me through my channel membership and Patreon page. If it wasn't for you, I'd basically be uploading these videos free of charge, which is just blasphemy. On the left side is a video of mine YouTube thinks you'll enjoy, and on the right is my most recent upload.